Service revenue, not adoption, is becoming the new corporate currency. And for quite a while, for, for the CS organizations, even professional service, education services, everybody was jumping on this adoption train. You know, I'm here to drive adoption, I'm here to drive adoption. And based on the current economic environment and the pivot we talked about this morning, there's just been this massive pivot to, no, 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 I care. I, I've got to monetize that. I've got to, there's got to be revenue here. And I'm going to start with you, Hal, who is our expert on offers. You know, what kind of heat are you seeing now where people are, are saying, hey, this is something I never tried to structure and monetize and articulate the value proposition? What kind of conversations are you, are you getting into now? Honestly, Thomas, it's gotten very pragmatic, um, especially since the investment dried up. Yeah. Because we can walk in and very confidently say, you have customers using standard services today. You have happy customers using those services. You can put premium services in market. Our benchmark says six to nine months is doable. Net new service offers. And there's probably not a better way to grab that low-hanging revenue fruit that, that we're all looking for. If you're down somewhere in a services service line <laughs> and you want to be a hero, get involved in a premium service launch. You can do it this year, and you will prove that this is something you can do. As you do it, talk to us, and when you do it, let us bring you back to brag about it, and then others can do it. We need to start this snowball rolling. But it starts with one premium service offered. You don't have to boil the ocean. And we just completed our Trends with Service Portfolio study, and we found that if you have more premium customers, you have more support revenue, more professional services revenue, and more technology revenue. If any of those are interesting to you, service revenue just got really important to you. And what about, you know, and I'm hearing this at this conference just the past two days, people are realizing, you know, we're, we're over-serving the customer. We're doing things that we were throwing in and it was okay, but now we're realizing we need to walk some of this back and say, actually, there's a line here. So, so what's the insight if, if that's the conversation they're in? How do they redefine some of those lines? Yeah, I think it's the monetization threshold that you were talking yeah. about earlier. We are giving away things that the customers clearly see are in their interest, and that's the problem. A lot of times I'm asked, should we be charging for these CS motions? And my answer is no. Those sound like, to me, they're driving your expansion, your revenue growth, et cetera. But when I start hearing success managers saying, you know what? There's an assessment we have that lands right on that. There's a move we have that's exactly what you need. That's value add to me. That's management consulting from customer success. So I think it's understanding where the customer themselves benefits, and if you can measure that, that's the adoption that you should be To redraw making. that line. I'm going to ask you a question here, Steve, because I literally was just in a meeting, and one of the members commented that since it's getting a little bit tough, tougher out there on their product, that the sales folks are you know, much more inclined to throw in you know, premium support or some of the other stuff and just say, hey, we can give the services away for free. Right. Well, I, I, I'm sorry, did you say that salespeople will sometimes give services away? I know. <laughs> no. This is Not crazy here. talk up on the stage here. Sometimes, I, I mean, here. sometimes I'm disconnected from reality. Do, uh, Can you help me now, with that? So, but then do they also heavily discount services? Well, no. I don't know. Um, that's a rumor. Yeah, that's they, a rumor. So also the, you, you've heard maybe they don't always value services. Yes, well, part, that's another rumor, person. unsubstantiated, but yes. Boy, um, you guys learned something. You had no idea what happened. <laughs> yes, <right. laughs> Thank God you came here. Yeah. No, uh, look. Um, when times get tough, salespeople, yes, we're going to do anything we can. And I, I say this, you know, first of all, don't think sales is not evil, okay? And we talk about sales, well, I don't want to be in sales. You know what? Whether you do or not, you know, there's nobody who cares more about the customer than sales. Because not only is, are there, is their reputation on the line, yes, they got to make money, but it's their reputation, their company's reputation. Most salespeople do what they do um, out of a state of caring about the customer and wanting this to work, not I'm trying to, you know, kill my professional services P&L. So that's, that's the first thing to start with. Um, but remember that salespeople, when times get tight, they're gonna sell what they understand, they're gonna sell what they know, they're gonna sell what's easy, okay? And if you, as service leaders and people who are in charge of the offer, can't make it clear to sales what the value is that they're giving away, and that means they can't position it the right way, yeah, that's going to get lopped off. And so that's part of your homework as service leaders is to make it easy for sales to sell, make the value proposition really clear, uh, bundled around outcomes, and then, you know, get on board. You know, policy is okay. 
Setting some rules and bounds is also yeah. That's where I mean that's where I was going to go with that because I think uh, so. It's getting tough out there. It's competitive. I don't have as many deals. So I'm going to try to sweeten the pot, right? That's going to be a natural inclination. And I think your point policy. I think of things like deal desks, where the deal doesn't go to the customer no. if that stuff's getting thrown in because you all the company needs that service revenue. <laughs> well, and I'll, I'll give you one. Um, we talked about you know, all the data points we've shown up here. Um, when companies take the time to have a formalized review by services, okay, where, which has some teeth, where services can stop a deal if they don't feel confident that the thing can get implemented, win rates actually go up. Mm -hmm. You know, not a lot, but they go up some. And what's even better about that, we talk about later, is expansion rates improve. Renewal rates improve. Like, why? Because how will you, you know, drive customer success if you're spending the first nine months arguing about why the thing doesn't work? Yeah. Um, so, you know, you've got to do the right deal up front, and services have got to be able to put that in there. We can't just discount that and give it away. Yeah, I mean, again, you want the good deals, the right deals, with the right customers for sure. 